here we go. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to Is It Oblique? So my aim today hopefully is to show you guys or educate you guys on the differences between Monstera adansonii and Monstera oblique. I do actually have specimens of each plant that I'm going to talk about here with me, so that should hopefully help you out. In addition to this, I have also referenced various different sources for information, so if you are interested in any of the things I've mentioned, they will all be referenced in the description below, so please do not hesitate to check out some of this information for yourself. Now, one of the main questions kind of in the plant world as far as any kind of Monstera adansonii thing is concerned is usually, you know, do I have a Monstera oblique or do I have a Monstera adansonii? I will include some examples of the plants that I'm talking about right now, just so you can get a sense of the differences between these two plants. Now, they may look similar on site, and this is part of the problem that people have in identifying, you know, which one they have. But let me tell you that a Monstera oblique, a genuine one, is extremely, extremely rare. There is even a hashtag for it that's often used on Instagram, hashtag it's never oblique. Not only that, but there are various memes about oblique. Let's try and get to the bottom of these differences between these two plants. I will start with Monstera adansonii, also known as, I have my trusty tablet here to help me out, Monstera Friedrichsthalii. Now, these plants, a lot of people say these plants are different. I'm just going to go right off the bat and say it's the same plant. So if you've heard of the name Monstera adansonii and you've heard of the name Monstera Friedrichsthalii, that is the same plant. I will stop you right there before you go worrying about the differences between adansonii and that. They're the same plant. It is a synonym for adansonii and often people use Friedrichsthalii to identify a more juvenile form of adansonii, but it is still adansonii. It's just people throw around a different name for it. So having cleared that up, I have three different forms of adansonii to show you guys because I don't know if anybody knows this, but there is more than one form. And I think this is what makes Monstera adansonii and oblique difficult for a lot of people to identify. So I'm going to quickly show you the three forms that I have. I'm not saying there are only three forms. I'm not actually entirely sure how many forms there are. There's probably a lot, but I have three here. So the first form I have, this is a very sad looking cutting, granted, but this form I have here is regular adansonii. I will try my best to show it up to the camera. As such, this is what we call regular form adansonii. This is the run of the mill adansonii that a lot of people may have. It looks like a vining plant. It has a lot of holes down it. Not much to say. Now this is where people start to get slightly confused because this here, this is from NSA Tropicals. Uh, it is named on the tag here. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but this is Monstera adansonii narrow form. Now you will notice straight away that this narrow form, if I can try and hold it up to the camera, there, you can see that the narrow form on this side does resemble something a little bit more exotic than the fatter form on the left with the larger holes. Now already a lot of people have Monstera adansonii narrow form and they do actually think they have oblique. So there's your first kind of level of confusion to all of this. But I can assure you this has come straight from Enid from NSA Tropicals. This is Monstera adansonii narrow form. And in addition to that, we have adansonii round form. This is slightly different. I don't know which the best leaf to show you is. This one right here, this is, as described, much, much rounder in appearance and much larger in appearance, to be honest. I think definitely next to these other forms, it does grow a little bit larger. As I say, this is also not Monstera oblique. This is Monstera adansonii round form. Right, the Monstera oblique. Now, before I begin telling you anything about Monstera oblique, there are two people that I would really like to introduce you to. The two people in question are Mick Mittermeier, who is an expert in all things Monstera. He has done a lot of traveling and he's seen many rare forms of Monstera in the wild. More importantly, he is able to identify Monstera oblique. Next to Mick on the left there, we have Enid Afalta. Enid, if nobody knows already, is the owner of NSA Tropicals, and she is known for being a collector and seller of a lot of rare plants. These two individuals are known as pretty much experts in their field, so I do very much trust their opinions on such matters. So before I go into Oblique, I just want to throw this out there so you know where I'm going with this, okay? Monstera Oblique, a real Monstera Oblique. 
there has been only 17 times in botanical history where this plant has been collected and, you know, taken for study by basically any individuals. 17 times ever documented. Not a lot. That is not a lot at all. In terms of scientific research, that is basically nobody. And you're probably thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense because loads of people are selling it on the internet. But what you must understand is around 70% of plants that are labelled oblique are actually Adansonii. The other 30% are honestly potentially hybrids, but they are not oblique. I will repeat, they are not oblique. I have here an example on my tablet that I'm looking at from, quite frankly, a very respectable UK website, clearly selling what to me looks like Monstera Adansonii in round form as oblique. So there is a classic example of just shops getting it wrong generally. I'm not sure about the price tag on that. I will actually insert it now just so you know how much that was being sold for of that size. Which brings me on to the eBay listing. So what you see before you is an eBay listing listed by none other than Enid from NSC Tropicals last year on eBay. And as you can see, that is a Monstera Oblique, and it is being sold for a very, very hefty price tag, if you will, but notice. Now, Enid does have massive credibility as a rare plant collector, just to give you an idea of this price tag. This brings me to my first point. I cannot stress this enough, guys. You cannot buy Monstera Oblique, a true Oblique, from any nursery or any plant shop in the world. Most Oblique are passed between collectors, who are very few and far between, and collectors among themselves will pay treble or even quadruple figures for one of these plants. So Mick did actually talk about this listing on a Facebook post of his round about the time this oblique was being sold, and he basically backed Enid's listing for this plant, because I think what has happened is a lot of people have complained about the price tag, so Mick did actually write a Facebook post in order to clear a few things up, and in that post he said himself, I am quoting him directly, you are more likely to be struck by lightning than to find this plant in any local nursery or in your local nursery, I think is what he said. I'm not paraphrasing, that is what he said. Similarly, a very well-respected article by Muggle Plants does support this by saying the following, but trust me, as much as I want this to be true, you do not have a Monstera Oblique. It is a botanical unicorn, so please spread the word change the name to the right one. So in Mick's Facebook post, he did actually express a lot of frustration on the subject of Adansonii versus Oblica, with particular regard to a lot of nurseries and just general sellers. They would literally label the plant as Oblica to drive the price up and basically to make people buy it over other listings. And I have to agree with this after doing the research for this video. It's really quite sad to see this happening because it means that you don't appreciate an oblique for what it is, which is basically a piece of history. It's so, it, like, I'm not exaggerating, guys. It is that rare. There is no exaggeration here. Because of these mislabelings, no one will ever appreciate how rare a Monstera oblique actually is. And I think that's quite sad in a way. So, Hopefully we can clear some of this up throughout the course of this video. Which leads me on to a brief history of Oblique, and I may read this because it's, it's a lot. Monstera Oblique was collected by Monroe Birdsey in 1975 in Peru. It was verified by Michael Madison in 1981, who wrote a doctoral thesis, Revision of Monstera, which I've actually linked below and I do refer to a little bit throughout this video. This was later verified again by Thomas Croat in 1991. Since then, it has been grown by Marie Selby Botanic Gardens in Florida, where it has remained since. Notice the use of the word it. Outside of this, only two known private collectors have ever managed to produce this plant of any substantial quantity, and even then it hasn't been a large quantity of this plant. Both of these collectors have not been known to sell this plant in over 10 years. These two original collectors have been responsible for a further approximately 8 to 10 known collectors in South Florida that have this plant. Outside of that, pretty much nobody has this plant. The Peruvian form, which I'm about to show you, is the only form that is grown in the US. There is no other type grown in the US. There are other forms of oblique cultivated in France currently, which you will see a picture of a little bit later on, or maybe even a video from Brazil and Ecuador but the Peru form is only in the US. Let me just show you a real oblique. Now this one is slightly sad, probably because it's being grown in a house and not in a vivarium or, a, you know, a very extreme situation where it should be grown. But this right here, in all of its glory, 
This is a Monstera Oblique, a real Oblique. This is Monstera Oblique Peruvian form. I could just very quickly show you this. If I just lift this up slowly but surely, you will see two very long, peculiar looking vines that are coming out of the stem. I'll highlight that right now. They're coming out of the stem of the plant. So I think now we're probably ready to start telling the differences between these two plants now that you understand the gravity of basically the rarity of this plant, the original pure oblique. So typically speaking, it is much easier to identify, you know, which plant is which in the wild because in the wild these plants flower more often and really the differences, the clear winning differences like straight off are in the flowers, but unfortunately we don't typically see flowers like this on houseplants. That is why, you know, it's harder to identify a houseplant as opposed to a plant growing in the wild. Mick Mittermeier does have a post talking about the flowers, but basically the inflorescence on an oblique barely has any flowers compared to that of an Adansonii. I will show you the pictures now, I will overlay them so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. I understand that that difference won't mean a lot to you because I certainly haven't seen an Adansonii flowering, let alone an oblique, so I understand that that won't mean very much to you guys, but hopefully the rest of these differences will. So the first difference I have for you is the leaves. Now when I say the leaves I mean the thickness and when I say the thickness I mean this you know the membrane of the leaf. So on Adansonii if you have a feel of yours at home you will feel that it just feels like a leaf. It's not overly thin, it's not overly rough but it feels like a leaf. You know this it's a leaf in your hand you can feel it this texture there. Conversely a real oblique if I feel these leaves, and I appreciate that you can't feel this because you're not here, obviously you can't touch the plant, but when I actually go to feel this, it is barely there. It is so razor thin. It's thinner than paper. It's like a super thin paper. When I lift it up, I can see through it, and that's probably why, because it's just so, so thin. It is unmistakable, the feeling difference-wise, between literally any of these plants, to be honest, any of them, and an oblique, it is a clear, like there is no contest. It feels barely there in your hand. So if you feel your plant and it just feels like, you know, a leaf, well, it's not an oblique. So the next difference I would like to speak about is the holes on the Adansonii, or the, the Monstera oblique itself. Now, on an Adansonii, this might not be the best one to show you because this one has a lovely gaping big hole, but the holes on an Adansonii are much more longitudinal or narrower. Generally speaking, the holes aren't round, they're very like slits almost, like this shape. Whereas a Monstera oblique, generally speaking, in ratio to the plant, the holes are much, much rounder in appearance. Now, I will touch on this very, very quickly because in the Muggle Plants article that I will have linked below, there is a phrase that and a real oblique is 90% whole. I'm going to explain this in a moment, but what I want you to know is that is only true for this particular form of oblique. Okay, this next one for me personally is the best way to tell like whatsoever whether you have an oblique or an Adansonii. This is without a doubt for me the gospel way of being able to tell. Like I would actually go off this as being the main way of telling. In an Adansonii, you will notice there is no no, nothing extra on this plant, not even on this plant here or even the one on the end. There is just nothing, nothing extra. However, on this plant here, as I've shown you before, it does have something extra and I will now explain what they are. So the weird vines that you can see coming out of the oblique there are known as stolons, also known as runners. And these stolons or runners are a kind of vine sprouted from a stem that certain types of plants can produce, like for example strawberry plants, that have nodes on them where roots can form. There will never be any leaves on this kind of vine, that is not what it is. You will never see a leaf on this kind of weird vine coming out of the stem of the plant. This is something that a plant will do when it wishes to look for somewhere else to grow. So it's actually trying to propagate itself away from its current location, basically, is what it's trying to do. It's worth saying that each node on these stolons or runners is capable of producing a full individual plant. I will show you what I mean by that in close up. Here, you can actually see the sheaths on top of the runners here. Each one of the nodes on these runners, this is a runner, this is a runner, each one of the nodes on here is capable of producing an oblique. So what will happen is there's a little, I think there's a little root coming out of this one here. What will happen is if this, if this, you know, roots up into soil, it can actually grow and produce another one of these. So if you add that up, potentially there is quite a few oblique here. This is, this is a lot. 
Now I know a lot of you probably don't know about these and that is because they don't typically grow on Adansonii. This is something that an obliqua will do. This is the golden difference, in my opinion, in my opinion, that allows you to tell a Monstera obliqua from an Adansonii. This is further supported by Enid herself from NSC Tropicals and she wrote on her eBay listing that I showed you earlier, rather than climbing a totem or tree, this plant prefers to send runners out to make new plants. That's what that is. Those are Stolons from the Oblique. Not only that, but Mick also mentions the following about runners. He says, this species is a miniature and will not climb and will only send scototropic leafless runners unless grown in exceptionally high humidity. This is why most growers never get to see it climb or flower. Not only that, but in Michael Madison's revision of Monstera, the doctoral thesis that he wrote, he does note in this thesis that Stolons are especially common in Oblique, like very, very common. So what I'm trying to say here is, if you have a Monstera Oblique in your house, you will probably see these runners. There is not a lot of chance that you won't. If you have a real Oblique, I mean, they've, granted, they probably aren't as long as these. These are a little bit, you know, ridiculous. But you will see some kind of runner coming from the plant because that is what it will do in these situations. The only way that this plant will probably not send runners is if it was put in some kind of vivarium and it was grown in excellent humidity, basically in the tropics outside in the wild, then it may start to grow. Other than that, this, this is what you're going to get with an oblique in household conditions. Okay, the next difference that I have for you guys is, I'm going to put it out there, it's my opinion, okay? This is not fact. This is, I haven't had this confirmed, I haven't asked anyone to confirm this, but this is my personal opinion, so you can totally throw this one away if you want. But in my opinion, from what I see here, with the three different forms of Adansonii and the Oblique up front, I can honestly say that an Oblique to me seems to have frills around the edge, okay? It's just something I've noticed. I could be extremely, extremely wrong. But if I show you first, even the narrow form of Adansonii, because I, I would argue it's closer to an Oblique than the actual regular Adansonii, there are no frills around there. None at all. Oblique, frills around the edge. Just something I've noticed, and I have noticed, at least for the Peruvian form that I'm talking about, that's this form here, I have noticed in a lot of images of it, the edges of the leaves do seem to be rather frilled, so that is my opinion. That is not an official difference. That's something I can just tell you from looking at a lot of pictures and looking at these different specimens of plants. The next difference between Monstera adansonii and Monstera oblique is the growth rate. Now, this is a biggie. Monstera adansonii just grows like any other vining plant would. You're not gonna, you probably don't have anything really much to say about the growth. Yes, it might grow a little bit slowly, but overall it's just, it grows the same as any vining plant, right? Oblique, you will notice a monumental difference. This plant here is likely to never really grow. I don't even know if it's ever gonna grow a new leaf. A keen eye among you probably noticed that this leaf is going a little bit crispy. It is probably never going to grow in height and that is because it will only really grow in ridiculous conditions. And I mean textbook perfect conditions, probably about 80% humidity, a really good temperature, excellent amount of light and something really nice to climb onto. Other than that, honestly, it's just not gonna grow. You are not gonna see new leaves popping up pretty much ever. It's not gonna happen. Even in the wild, an oblique growing in the wild in the perfect conditions, it will take the plant several years to reach a couple of feet in height. So it is, it's just not gonna grow. Like this is never gonna get, really, to be honest, in these current conditions, it's never gonna get any bigger. This is kind of what you see is what you get. All it's going to do is just continue to send out runners of the plant. And the last difference I have to tell you guys about Monstera adansonii versus Monstera oblique is the price. Now, let me just say something. There is no way on this earth that you are going to pay less than a three figure at least sum of money for one of these mainly because they're not even sold as i mentioned before on the internet it is rare that they're even sold obviously enid from nsa sold one last year other than that i don't even know when it's been sold i don't think it has been sold since i have this one on loan i don't know when it was sold i don't know how the person acquired it i'm not knowledgeable on that 
this plant will never really even be leaked to a nursery because only collectors can grow it, identify it and share it among themselves. No smart collector is going to release this for no money. It's too valuable. It is way, way, way too valuable and too collectible and too precious because there isn't a lot of it kicking about in the world. I'm really, really sorry to be the bearer of this news, but you have to understand guys, I'm genuinely just trying to bring forward information. So I want to go back to something really, really quickly and that is the 90% whole thing. Now I posted a picture of this oblique, it's not in the frame, this oblique here on Instagram a little while ago and I was quite quickly met with comments like, oh, you know, you sure it's real? Why don't you read this article? You know, 90% of the leaf is whole and all this kind of stuff. And I really feel like I need to kind of blow your minds a little bit on this subject. So this brings me to the Muggle Plants article that a lot of you may or may not know about it. If you do not know about it, it is genuinely a very good read and quite accurate. So please do feel free to go and read that. There's a lot of very interesting things in there. Muggle Plants, I would honestly argue, is 90% correct because in the article, and I'm going to quote this directly, the Muggle Plants article states, it goes through the differences and everything else. And then at the end of the article, it states, States, Oblique's leaves consist mostly of holes. 90% of the leaf are holes. This is the mantra that everyone has picked up and uses to identify Oblique or Adansonii, and this is it. This is like the golden quote that everybody uses, and I've had it kind of said to me quite a few times on the internet as well. The thing is, the 90% hole thing is 100% a myth. It's not true. I don't know what to tell you, it's not true. The 90% myth, even though it is a myth, even if it was correct, only applies to the Peruvian form of oblique, which is this form. Now, by this point, a lot of you may be confused. Well, no, there's oblique. No, there isn't. There really isn't. I'm about to blow your mind. So oblique can actually take many different forms. I'm actually going to show you a couple of images to illustrate what I'm talking about. This first image I'm showing you here is from Mick Mittermeier's Instagram. I will leave his handle below. Would you believe it if I told you that this is Monstera oblique. It is not the Peruvian stereotypical form of oblique that we typically think of, but I'm telling you, it is oblique. Not even joking, you can go, I will leave the link for this, you can verify it for yourself, it is Monstera oblique. This next plant I'm showing you is the same plant as I've just shown you, only it is several months on, I believe, and you can clearly see quite large holes developing on this plant. Again, it's oblique. Does it look like the oblique we think about? No, it doesn't. I'm actually going to blow your mind a little bit more now because the next image I'm now showing you is also Monstera oblique. And get this, this form of oblique doesn't have any holes at all. This oblique I'm showing you now originates from Brazil and it's currently being grown in France under a man named Rudy de Bouzy. Wonderful name. It is a form of oblique, and to be honest, on this video or image, I'm not sure which one I'm showing you, you can actually see the runner or the stolon growing out from the plant. So I really thought I would just put that out there just to kind of really, you know, throw everyone's, you know, what they believe about oblique, just take that and just throw it up into the air because there is not enough information kicking about on the internet about this stuff, and it's very, very fascinating. So a few of you may be thinking, okay, so we know that this oblique here is the Peruvian form and we know that the 90% whole myth only applies to the Peruvian form. So you may be thinking, okay, well, this right here is not 90% whole and you would be right. I wanted to figure this out for myself as well because I wanted the correct answers also. So I did message Mick Mittermeier on Instagram and I basically said to him, you know, I know that the 90% myth only applies to Peruvian form. However, I have Peruvian form oblique and could you please explain to me why this isn't 90% whole? It's looking a lot more regular than that. And he did respond to me and he's given me permission to use, you know, to show you what he said. It was part of a larger answer. He speaks further on about the differences between two other plants that I asked him about, which I will get to in a moment. But he basically said that because this oblique here is not mature and it's not climbing, it will never reach the impressive levels of perforation or whatever you want to call it that the typical oblique that you have seen photographs of on the internet will reach. The oblique photographs that are mainly shown on the Muggle Plants article are of an oblique in the wild. An oblique in the wild will very easily reach this level of, you know, holes, but an oblique in this scenario, in the one that I have here, 
will not. Even when it's growing in the wild, this has to be growing for an impressive amount of time before you will even see that level of hole in the obliqua. So I would never really expect ever, to be honest, to see 90% of holes in this plant. So I'll now get on very quickly to my honourable mention just to show you that this is not simply a problem for Monstera obliqua and Adansonia. This actually happens with quite a few Monstera. So I have here next to me what a lot of you may think is a very, very large Adansonii. It is not. This is Monstera epipremnoides. It does look on the surface to be a large, just huge, you know, mature version of Adansonii. It is not. It's a very different plant. It is also very quickly worth noting that this plant also has a considerable price tag. I happen to know that this plant retails for about 200 English pounds and that is of a plant of this size so that's what three or four leaves four leaves 200 English pounds for this I wanted to mention this just because you know this is another plant that is very difficult to tell and I did speak to Mick about this as well and he basically said you know it, it is difficult to tell you normally have to tell in the wild but again with this kind of price tag you're not going to get this sold mass market. It's rare anyway. It's not readily available. And when these things get mature, they look very, very interesting. I will include a photograph for you right now. But they are very, very cool looking. I quite like them. They're quite nice. So in summary, I just want to say, <laughs> please do not shoot the messenger. But in support of Mick Mittermeier and all he has publicly said on the subject, and in support of the Muggle Plants article that you may or may not have read, again, links below, you do not have a Monstera obliqua. I am truly sorry to be the one to tell you that, but you just don't. By the fact that you might be sat there watching this video to see which one you have, you do not have it. If you have an obliqua, you are fully aware of the fact and you have spent a crazy amount of money on one. If you could even find one being sold. The point of this video was to not tell you all that uh, you don't have an obliqua. The point of this video was to really drum home how rare these plants are and how much we should respect them for how rare they are. A lot of nurseries, as I've said, label this plant incorrectly. They shouldn't. It's not necessarily anybody's fault, but it is incredibly frustrating because people around the world do not understand what an absolute botanical unicorn this plant is. I can't even believe I am holding onto one right now. This plant is on loan, by the way. It is not mine. None of the specimens I've showed you in this video, apart from the very sad looking Adansonii cutting, none of these plants belong to me. They're on loan. So you will not see them past this video and maybe the next video. You won't see them in my house again. I'm not holding on to them. They are not mine. I want to thank Mick Mittermeier especially for helping me on all things Oblica and allowing me to use various materials of his, including photographs from his Instagram. This video was very difficult for me to, to gather information on, as you can probably tell. So this video has been delayed for quite a while. I'll apologize for that now. But honestly, I needed to get this right because I don't want to inform something and have people go on my word if my word is incorrect. So I apologize for spending so long, you know, preparing this video, but it had to be correct. However, I do feel unbelievably privileged to have even had, to be honest, any of these plants in my care. I'm very, very grateful to the person that loaned me these plants. Very, very grateful. This has been an honor and a privilege. I will miss this little guy. He's been sat in my living room. He has caused me much stress. So I hope this video was insightful. I have not meant to offend anybody or frustrate anybody. I understand that a few of you may be a little bit annoyed perhaps that you don't have what you think you have or you've been missold. Some of you might still think that you have an obliqua. That's perfectly fine. I'm just giving you the facts. Please don't shoot the messenger. I'm only trying to relay this information so we can all understand this plant for what it is. And honestly, that is, at this point, it's a piece of history. It's not something that's in our homes. If it is in our homes, you will know. <laughs> you will know. One last thing before I go. I know that I've said before that Mick Mittermeier is able to identify Monstera Oblica from Adansonii, but I would really appreciate it if you didn't all go to his Instagram and just start spamming him with pictures of Adansonii and Oblica. So please try not to message him and send him loads because I think he gets most of that anyway. <laughs> 
So please do spread the word, please spread awareness of how rare and amazing and unique this plant is. Please spread the word that there are other forms of oblique, that they will only grow in a certain way, in a certain environment. And I guess let's all start calling our Adansonii what it is, which is Monstera Adansonii, and be proud to have Monstera Adansonii because it's a beautiful plant. And I only have a little cutting, I don't even have an established plant, I would like one. But this is all I have at the moment, so I'm kind of growing it out. So if you have one of these, consider yourself very lucky because I do not have one. So without further ado, thank you very, very much for watching. I would be interested to see what you guys have to say on this subject. Goodbye for now. I will see you next week and have a great weekend. Bye.